gonna be for people who want a nice quick game that's not super, super complex or super thinky, and it doesn't take very long either. <laughs> With the recent discovery of an ancient hog burial site, renowned archaeologist Professor Bones has stumbled upon the treasure. You will be one of many archaeologists going down to find the treasure for yourself and gathering as much of it as you can. However, beware, there are curses and other things like thieves that are also trying to stop you from gathering the treasure along with other archaeologists. You're going to be playing cards from your hand and utilizing those cards to gain the treasure and when the treasure deck runs out you're going to escape, count up your points that you possibly have gained and whoever has the most wins. Now be careful though because not only are there curses and other archaeologists but there's also thieves looking to mess with you in the game Treasure Hogs. It plays about two to five players for ages 14 and up and takes about a half an hour to play. It's the basic idea of the game. Let's go ahead and take a look down below. I'll show you what comes included and how to play and then we'll come up and discuss the game and what I think about it currently on Kickstarter where you can go ahead and pick it up. Link in the description if you'd like. Let's begin by setting up the game Treasure Hogs, and for this example, we're going to use two players, Angus Pigsty and Professor Bones. And everybody is going to get a certain number of these resource and strategy cards. You'll be shuffling both resources and strategy cards together. Resources are going to look like these guys here, and then the ones that are like these actions here, are strategy cards, they're gonna look like this. Once you've gone ahead and shuffled them up, you're going to deal each player seven cards. Also, go ahead and give each player a feast card. These cards are set aside and they'll be used for victory points at the end of the game as well as during the game you can spend them on your turn to utilize your special ability. Each character has their own unique special ability. These cards here are treasure cards, and this is going to be your treasure deck. Now, in the game, for the beginning game, you're going to be taking these six curses out of the deck, you're going to shuffle them up, and then you're going to choose three of them, and you're going to place them in the deck here. After you do that, make sure you go ahead and shuffle this deck up, and then you're going to go ahead and deal six cards out alongside the treasure deck. You might run into curses, or you're going to find unique treasures in the game. After that, then you are pretty much ready to go. There is, of course, extra or additional characters that can be chosen either randomly, or if you'd like, you can choose them personally. Set aside these if you're not using them. And then you have these four-point treasure cards. These bring a little bit of added gameplay after you've played the first or second game, and I'll explain that in my review. So now, as you can see, I've got all of my treasure cards here lined up, whether they be treasures or court curses. Everybody has their seven cards, their character, and one single feast. After doing that, go ahead and set aside the extra curses that you did not use. You can make sure that they're face down so nobody can see them, and begin by selecting a player. And you can choose that in a number of ways. Personally, I like to select the player that most recently stole a treasure from an ancient tomb. Next thing you're going to do is have that player begin, and the first thing that they can do is they can choose to discard any three matching cards from their hand if they would like to. And the reason why they'd like to do that is because maybe they actually don't need all three of those cards. There's going to be treasure out on the field here, and all of them are going to have a cost, and the cost is going to be represented on the side by the required symbols. And if you have those cards in your hand, you can go ahead and spend them in order to gain the treasure. And if you happen to have, I don't know, four ropes, you might not want all four ropes, especially if all the cards didn't actually have ropes on them. So that is one reason why you do that. This is, of course, optional, and you don't have to do it if you do not want to. Then after that, you can play cards. You can gather as many treasures as you like, but you're going to be placing down cards underneath these treasure cards in attempts to gathering them. No leftover residual is going to go from one treasure to another. So when you place two ropes here and they cost, they give you a total of four power, you can't utilize one of those power to transfer over here. You have to play a separate unique card. So I've got a rope here. I've got a wealth, which is a wild. I've got a shovel, a thief, another rope, another shovel, and a unique uh, vent card here, which I can use to avoid curses. 
playing cards allows you to get out as many treasures as you can, or if you can't, you can simply skip this phase. But in this case, I actually can. So for instance, I'm going to want to get this treasure here. It's going to cost two ropes, and I have two ropes, so I'm able to go ahead and collect that one. And if I wanted to, I could also try and get that one there, maybe? No, I don't think so. I don't have a pickaxe. Um, I have two shovels, and I've also got uh, wild, that's also not enough for that one. And then I have a thief here. So I guess I can only gather this one here. So I have played my two cards, and then the other players can choose to try and steal. And the way they're going to steal is by using the thief cards. This character doesn't have any. However, if he or she did, you would go ahead and take their thief card, and you could attach as many thieves as you want to it. You could also use uh, some other unique cards like a raider as well as wealth to attach to them. So in this case here, if this player had this, that would be two and three power. And if this was matching or higher than the total amount of cards played over here, they could play these cards together to steal the treasure from that player and gain it for themselves on the other player's turn. Pretty nifty, right? So in this case, however, no one's going to be able to affect this player. These are going to go to the discard card pile and you can simply turn them to the side next to the deck over here the resource deck gather this treasure and place it in front of them that is going to give them additional points throughout the game after which they are then going to have the option to discard between one and three cards from their hand if they would like and in this case i actually might so i'm going to go ahead and look here maybe i don't want this thief card for instance i could discard this card in which case Afterwards, I can then draw up to one to three cards and a max of seven. So I'll draw one, I'll draw two, and then I will draw three cards. Then I'm going to be done. I'll replenish the cards here that were lost. In this case, there was just one and pass the turn. Another thing to note too is if there are curses on the field, these are negative points at the end of the game. And if a player plays cards uh, and isn't able to gather any of these treasures, they're going to have to take a curse. If there's more than one curse out, they'll take the lowest curse. So in this case, if Agnes was not able to get this lantern here, then they would have to take this curse, giving them minus one point at the end of the game. But there are certain unique actions that you can take, like for instance, the avoid curse to prevent yourself from gathering that curse. And hopefully another player is going to get it on their turn. Play will pass to this player over here, and the game will continue. Do they want to discard cards if they have duplicates? And uh, doesn't look like they want to do that, I suppose. And then do they want to go ahead and gather treasure? Okay, so this person here, he's got a total power of four. He has the two symbols required for this card. He's got two ropes, a wild, and he's got a shovel. So I could go ahead and do this. I'm going to have him play this wealth and this shovel here. And this wealth is, of course, a wild, so it accounts for that pickaxe. That's a power of two. And then, of course, players have the opportunity to try and steal. So in this case here, I don't have that thief anymore, so I'm not going to be able to do that. But if I did, I could obviously, if I had enough power, so for instance, this is a two, I could steal this card. But in this case, this player is actually going to be able to gather these cards here, putting them into their area over here. These cards will then discard. They can then choose to discard cards if they want. Oops, discard them over here. They can discard cards if they want, and then simply draw up to three cards with a maximum hand size of seven. After that, they're then going to go ahead and flip these cards over, and the play is just going to continue, taking turns, and they're going to be discarding these feast cards here to be able to use their abilities when the card says. You can only do it once per turn, generally speaking, and of course, you only get them when you have those fives that you acquire throughout the game. And like I said, when the deck runs out and everything is gone, everybody's collected everything, then you're going to add up all your points. You're going to go ahead and check your point total here. You'll check your point total over here. And whoever has the most is the winner, subtracting from any of the negative curses and including bonuses for all of the different feast cards. And that's the basic idea for the game Treasure Hogs. Let's come up and discuss it in my review of the game. And you can also go ahead and check it out on Kickstarter right now if you're already satisfied. All right, let's discuss Treasure Hogs. Now, obviously this game is a more gateway game. It is going to be more for families. It's going to be for kids. Even adults can play it with a little bit of the extra strategy rules. But in general, it's going to be for people who want a nice quick game that's not super, super complex or super thinky. And it doesn't take very long either. Uh, in the game, you'll have a bunch of different characters to choose from. And they're all kind of like parody characters from different things. You're going to have Laura Slop. Hogdini, Professor Bones, Amelia Swineheart, Nep 
Pigleon and like Sir Hogs a lot. And so as you can see, there's, there's some different cards and they all function in their own unique way, utilizing those feast cards to provide you with a benefit and having one to start with is nice. And you can choose to keep those as points if you need them, especially because they could come down to the wire or you can use them to benefit yourself to get more points in the game. Uh, this game has some unique little elements as well because at the beginning of your turn you're going to be able to discard multiple cards. Uh, if you have multiples of a certain card you can get rid of those cards in order to gather new cards allowing you to have more combinations. A lot of the games I play like this don't have that and I think this is a very nice touch to it. Playing cards is simple and choosing to pick up certain cards. Usually there's a pretty straightforward card that you should take or cards. And then of course the strategy comes into thief cards. You can utilize thief cards to gather treasures but you can also utilize them to steal from your opponents. You can use wealth as well as a unique raider card in the deck to kind of combine their power in order to gather the strongest cards and that's very very powerful but it's at a cost as well because you don't draw cards until the end of your turn so if you utilize those cards in a four or five player game you're gonna have less cards to steal uh, with when your opponents are taking their turns. Maybe you missed out on that four or five card shot when instead you chose to get a two card or even a one card utilizing your thieves. Thieves have a commodity value and so you want to make sure that you're not spending them willy-nilly whenever you want. Of course there's also action cards, things that let you avoid curses like we already previously discussed. You're gonna have cards like Smoke Cloud that can stop anybody from stealing from you in a round and then of course we talked about the Raider too. She's got a five strength or a five cost that you can utilize as currency and uh, she can be used as any resource and she can be used to steal or gain treasure and she can only be used once per game. Once you utilize her, she gets discarded. She's like a superpower card, but as opposed to other games that have superpower cards that make you gain extra turns or people lose turns, this one's not not that not that crazy, but also it feels good when you use her and you know that it's a winning combination to have her along with cards together a 5-point treasure. All of the cards are going to be very useful throughout the game, and of course the ones that are more common will you'll have the ability to get rid of. And like I said, after you play cards and gather those treasures, you can then choose to discard cards from your hand. Which is nice too, because you're going to draw up to three. You could choose one, two, or three with a max of seven, and maybe you have five cards in your hand already and you want to get rid of one, so that you can draw that max three to get rid of a card you don't need. A lot of ways to modify your hand in a game that has quite a bit of luck when it comes to drawing from the deck, but a lot of mitigation as well, and I think that works very, very well uh, for this game. The game ends when the deck runs through, and in a two-player game, I thought it might actually be rather long, but after playing it a couple times, I could say that the game is actually about about 30 minutes even with two players. It's rather quick and everybody's taking a treasure on their turn so it actually doesn't matter how many players you have it's going to have about the same approximate time depending on if you have somebody with analysis paralysis or not for regardless the number of players in the game. This is a fun game. This is a very straightforward game but there's some unique little twists and turns how you use your character abilities and all that kind of stuff which puts the game nicely together. The theme of the game is you're basically an archaeologist going into a dig in order to gather treasure and unique things avoiding curses and stopping your opponents from stealing from you if possible or choosing when to take treasure so your opponents are not able to steal from you after maybe everybody's dumped on your other competition now you can go ahead and play and gather a better treasure so there's a lot of little 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 thinky things you can do throughout the game uh hogs gathering treasure archaeology i mean it, it, i suppose it works it's not my first theme i'd probably pick but it's definitely unique it's not something i've seen before and it has some unique uh deja vu from other things i kind of like you know i, I kind of dig i also like the different parodies that are introduced in the game and the choice of choosing between them gives you a unique and unique and interesting ability that you can kind of play with and so your game experience is going to be different each and every time but not too different the game's gonna be pretty straightforward regardless this is a game that you could consider a filler game but you could also play it through an entire game night a couple times. It's something you can come back to the table with and play again and again. But for those of you that are like hardcore strategy gamers, it might not be for you because it's definitely more on the lighter side. A couple of little nitpicks I have in the game is the type of font for the cards. This is mainly graphic design stuff, but some of them are smaller, some of them are bigger to fit that font. Personally, I would prefer if they just use the same font for all of the cards and the same, um, not the same font, but the same sizing or whatever. I think that would make it look a little better. And also like some of the 
the characters and stuff like that. For instance, like the back of this card is this here, and then the front of the card is going to look like this. So they're very similar in nature. So sometimes you can confuse with the front and the back, the, the discard pile and the main deck. And their suggestion is to turn one side to the right, which does help. But for some reason, sometimes in my head, it just, I keep wanting to put it on the deck. I notice that's a thing I keep doing over and over again, but I was able to figure it out eventually. Uh, uh, otherwise, there are some cute little unique pieces of art here. I mean, I really dig this one. I really like all the curses. The game feels fresh and fun, and when I was playing it, I was like, wow, I'm, I'm really, really enjoying myself in the two-player mode, and I wasn't sure I was actually going to enjoy it. I played it more players previously in the past. Games changed a little bit since then, but then playing it like other two players, and then trying three and four, I actually had a good time playing all around. If this game is interesting for you, and you're interested in taking a look, it's down below, currently on Kickstarter you can pick up a game of treasure hogs fun for the whole family be that archaeological pig person that you've always wanted to be and gather all those unique treasures <laughs> thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review if you like this video check out the rest of our videos here on youtube like subscribe and of course hit that notification bell button let us know what you think about this game is it something you'd be willing to pick up why or why not and like i said before links in the description to take a look at it see what stuff they got going on there on the campaign you can also check out our website unfilteredgamer.com blog posts giveaways two of them in fact one for dungeon dropped up too deep and the other one is for the game uh well it's mud they're both the kickstarters but the game they're giving away is basic dungeon drop and the uh base game for side effects but the campaigns are currently live as well on the site and you can win a copy yourself and of course if you back the games you'll also be able to have one for your friends also go ahead and check out our live stream every wednesday 6 30 p.m pst you'll see us play games just like this one in fact we will be playing this one at some point and we're going to be having fun 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 and if you want to join us you you can go ahead and do so by joining us on Facebook. All right, guys, thank you so much. And as always, we look forward to treasure hogging with you next time.